Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz here at SD HistCon in San Diego and I'm joined by Steve Carey, the lead designer for Shiloh First Day, the upcoming American Civil War game from Revolution Games. Steve, thank you for joining. Thank you for having me here, Mike. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about your game? Yes, uh, Shiloh First Day is part of the Blind Sword series from Revolution Games, which started back in 2016. Uh, designer Herman Lutman, very prolific, very popular designer nowadays, uh, did a game called Stonewall Sword. And since that time, uh, other designers have come in, and I started out as a fan of this game, and now I'm a designer. And this game is a regimental scale, moderate complexity, uh, very varied uh, scenarios and turn lengths, uh, covering the opening Confederate attack at Shiloh, the Union fallback, and then the Union holding on to Pittsburgh landing, trying to keep the Confederates at bay until the Union reinforcements arrive. And you talked a little bit about the span and scope of the day. Talk, could you tell a little bit about the scenarios that are in the game and some of the different options that players have? Because this is a, a relatively big game, right? It's two maps? It, it is, Mike. It's the first two map a game in the Blind Sword series, which has uh, a reputation of handling small to medium battles very, very well. So initially when this game was pitched, there was some concern about a two map game and it was a too much of a burden on the system. And what we've done here is with Shiloh, many of the regiments were at full strength. So in comparison to other games, other battles where regiments had already fought and there were stragglers, here at Shiloh, most of the regiments were, had a full complement. So while we have a lot more soldiers participating on each side in this a major battle, the number of counters really is not that big of an increase from some of the other games. Awesome. So now if I'm a player who might not be inclined to play the full two map scenario, are there options for me, are there reasons for me to get the game if I don't want to play the whole campaign? Definitely, and that dovetails into the two map uh, concept as well. We were very cognizant of this when we were um, pitching and designing the game. So there were actually seven scenarios in the game. Uh, two of them were played on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, which is a map portion, and they're solitaire. So uh, you can set it up at your computer desk, play it, have fun, replay it again, about an hour, an hour and a half. And those are great introductory scenarios also because you learn the mechanics as you found yeah, yesterday. Speak from experience, we had a great time, a great teacher we did. to teach. We played through the initial uh, solitaire scenario, which ended up in an epic charge, but that's a whole different story. Probably not the feature of this video, but... They've already written a song about yeah. that charge. <laughs> 17th Alabama will go down in my gaming, my wargaming history, I think. It's so. already famous. And then it, we have four one-map scenarios. And another innovation, Mike, that uh, a lot of people don't know about what Revolution is going to do with this game is on the back side of the map instead of you having to set up let's say two maps for the hornet's nest scenario they are going to back print on the map portion of the a map and portion of the b map so instead of setting up two maps and not using a lot of the perimeter you could set it up in your map frame and play on one map I have a question for you last night I was looking up Shiloh to get a little bit more background information on the game and I found that there's, there's been a, this game, the, the battle has been fairly well covered. So if you're, if you're a gamer that maybe has a different game on Shiloh, can you talk a little bit about how this game is different than the others out there? Absolutely. And why you made it. Yeah. Absolutely. Shiloh was, first of all, a very interesting battle, a uh, battle in the West. It was a key battle, just like Antietam. Um, very, very important battle for the American Civil War and the progress. You have uh, Sherman and Grant, who if they had faltered here, they may not have been promoted and gone on to have the careers that they had. Um, you have a Confederate leader, the highest ranking uh, leader to, to perish in a battle, and that was uh, Johnston, mm. ever in the history of this country. Uh, a lot of the Shiloh games that I had played, uh, I've been playing games since 1972. So in, in five decades, none of them, Mike, really hit that groove that I was looking for. So I took this on as a challenge. And we've done some different things here. Uh, the Union camps, uh, which are hard to see in this video, we've given them like a zone of control to represent the looting that the Confederate troops did at the battle. Uh, research shows that about 30% of the Confederates looted. Uh, they hadn't eaten, they were taking bacon off the griddle, they're taking ammunition pouches, they're taking daguerreotypes of, 
a soldier's girlfriend. Oh, wow. And all these things were souvenirs, they were food, they were, there were a lot of things in these camps. So rather than have a complicated gamey rule that can be circumnavigated, that basically as a Confederate's advance, they're gonna to need to deal with these camps. But with the camps having a zone of control, it's very simple. You just pay an extra movement point to represent guys breaking off uh, looting and then coming back into formation. So that's one innovation we're very proud of. Also, the pace of the battle is really important. And a lot of the Shiloh games, the Confederate attacks, and by noon the battle's over. The Union has their line, it's impenetrable. It's more like World War I than American Civil War. Uh, thanks to the development from Revolution Games, uh, Roger Miller and Richard Handwith, we've now extended the game where playtesting shows the Confederates have a, have a very solid chance mm. uh, to win the game. And then there's one other thing that we've done, a little controversial maybe. We cut out the march of the, un or of the Confederate Army from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. So other games may have the Confederates come on here on the edge of the board. The Union player does nothing the first two turns and the Confederates march. That would have been the easy way out. I could have just said, bring all your guys. Right. Instead, what we've done is we've researched every regiment in the game. It's about 200 regiments and batteries. Where were they located? Now, could we find information on everyone, everything that we needed? No. So there are some educated guesses, but the battle now starts at eight o'clock with Confederate surprise. You're not wasting hours marching and sitting around wondering what's happening, rolling dice, but there's really not much going on. Right. You start in, you start with the battle, it's historical, and where it goes from there ah, is up to you. Very nice. Yeah. Now, people will always ask, so I'm gonna ask you, and I know having a chance to play the first scenario, which was a solitaire yeah. scenario, right. could you talk about if you're a solitaire gamer, uh, what does this offer to you? It is a big game. Uh, the solitaire uh, gamer is going to have a lot of value in this package. We have the two mini-map uh, scenarios that we talked about. But for those unfamiliar with Blind Swords, it's an excellent solitaire game. The only real hidden information are event shits which come out of the cup. Some of those, uh, probably the majority of those, are play immediately, so those chits get played. There were a few held chits, so you'll need to um, be able to manage both sides of those. It's very easy and it's mostly common sense. And the blind sword system is a system that's based on chaos. So Mike, when you and I are looking at the map, we can see where a brigade is, we can see where a division is, but there's no radios, there's no helicopter, there's no drones, there's a lot of confusion on the battlefield. And what Blind Swords does is the way the chits come out, it's not that you have to activate this brigade. You get a choice. A division may have three brigades. So you're engaged as a solitaire player. You're making decisions. There's not a lot of hidden information. And the battlefield is constantly changing. It's constantly rotating, which is uh, to a large degree mitigating that bird's eye view that we have when we sit down and play the game. Right. So it's a lot of chaos and a lot of fun for the solitaire general. And having experienced it yesterday, that was my feeling too. You know, the, the chit pull system, I think, especially if you're playing both sides as a solitaire player, creates that unpredictability. You're it getting does. tossed decisions that are interesting to solve, and then you're looking at it from the other side. So I, I have that sense too that it's going to play really well really well solitaire. Um, I'd like to ask a little bit about the game's complexity sure. in terms of, you know, if we think of uh, the wargaming scope of complexity, where might you say this falls? I would say this falls in the medium uh, complexity scale. Um, a little bit more complicated than the standard blind swords rules because we are simulating um, a full day of battle. Uh, at a half hour turn, that's 24 turns. Most of the blind sword games are uh, shorter than that, maybe eight turns, 12 turns. So we do have some rules, uh, like the rules for the camps that I mentioned earlier. Uh, hopefully they're simple enough to, um, for players to handle. We also have a variant in here that, that you don't see in, in a lot of the Shiloh games, and we have Lou Wallace uh, possibly making an optional appearance. Lou Wallace wrote the most popular book of the 19th century, and that was Ben-Hur. Oh, wow. So, um, we have an optional rule. His uh, division kind of got lost, did some things, uh, 
really didn't arrive until at the end of the day, and Grant was infuriated. <laughs> uh, uh, he was, and Grant was not drunk at this battle, by the way. That <laughs> I, I heavily That's researched. That's a rare that. thing. Yeah, he was not <laughs> drunk. He was nine miles away at his headquarters, and he got to the battle quickly, and he made a difference. Oh, it was wow. one of his finest moments. Right. right. So we have some rules for Lou Wallace to bring in the optional division for the Union. Um, there's also some rules that vary from the Blind Swords series, like for example, when you're tracing a line of sight down a hex side in Blind Swords, if one hex is woods and the other is clear, then that's going to be blocked. But in this game, because of the weather, the time of year was April, most of the trees had dropped their foliage in winter. So, and there's a lot of woods in Shiloh. I'm looking at the map now, I can, yes. A lot of woods. I totally agree with that. So to help with the combat, we've uh, allowed the firing player to pick either hex. So right. you'll, ha you'll have some more shots, some more combat, and while the woods will still block your line of sight. Yeah. Line of sight is not that difficult in this game, and uh, there's more combat because you get to choose. And I get a sense from having experienced yesterday, I mean, I experienced an hour and a half of the game system yeah. yesterday with Steve, you teaching me as we we're going along. Yeah. I felt like that moderate complexity is a very, very accurate estimate. So that's really important for us. This is a big game, but it's not a, a monster game with an 80 page rule booklet. Yes. Uh, and then we're going to have a playbook also, which is going to have an example of play, which is also uh, new for Blind Swords. We're going to have an example of play for you, historical background. So there's a lot of material in addition to a scenario book also. So we, we've broken it up into chunks. And then the scenarios, uh, Mike, they're not programmed instruction where you climb the ladder, but we ease you in with a solitaire or an introductory scenario. We introduce some of the surprise rules, and then we take you from there. So by the time, if you're ever ready for two maps in 24 turns, you're up to speed. Yeah, which is great. It's love to be that gradual introduction to the yeah. complexity of the game. But if you want to dive into the full thing, and one of our play testers is, Steve, I'm not interested in the early scenarios. Give me the big scenario. It's all yours. You no, it's, not, it's being played yeah. here at SD Histcon too. We're SD's play speaking. testing the heck out of yeah, this game. Right. So. And that is a sense too, I think, from the game like this, you know, one of the questions is, is you know, the historical accuracy and how it plays, and that's a sense, I guess, there's been a ton of work done yes. on that. I mean, all you're talking about, the research with the regiments to get it right, and your passion for the subject, it really... I love it. Yeah, for sure. Um, if people want more information about the game, where do they go, what do they do? Uh, please go to the Revolution Games website, and it's very simple, www.revolutiongames. And uh, they're also on Facebook, under Revolution Games. And um, we've been play testing the game extensively and that's part of the delay because instead of just one battle we have seven scenarios so every scenario is getting 20 plus play tests to wow. go through it and make sure they work properly so uh, the game is due out fingers crossed sometime in july um, of 2024 yes, yes. correct okay. sometime sometime in the summer july a lot of that is dependent on, on the production uh, the economy there's other things going on but the delay right now is us because we are hitting this hard uh, revolution the owners actually play the games they sit down and they've been at multiple conventions including here and, and they spend the time and they dedicate themselves to having the best game possible, and this probably sounds like a commercial, but that's why <laughs> part of your work. That, well, yeah, <laughs> yes. that, that's why Revolution Games has the reputation that they do, uh, because their games are quality games. So we're looking for July. Uh, the price point hasn't quite been set yet. Uh, we're going all out on this. Uh, we're going to have player aids, uh, activation cards, uh, three booklets. So the price we're still working on it, but fingers crossed for July. Thank you so much for joining. I will put links to the Facebook page on the game and then the, the page on Revolution Games down in the video description down below. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you very much, That's Mike. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I appreciate your interest. And I can tell there is so much passion and enthusiasm and just love for this game and this oh. battle. I'm really looking forward to seeing it get to people's tables. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, everyone.